Hey guys, Animortis here. Uh, it's been a while. I wanted to make sure though that I had this process down uh, by and large before I went ahead and started uh, producing a video for it. I think I got that. Um, I am happy to proceed and make something you guys might find interesting. What I'm going to be doing today is a free BSD bootstrap installation uh, for free BSD 13. The same way one might do um, Debian or Ubuntu, the way I did in my previous videos. The process is a little different. FreeBSD has its own tools. It uses its own init system. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and get started. So to begin, uh, first thing we're going to do, and uh, what I'm using is the FreeBSD 13 disk one ISO found online. Uh, we're going to be moving to and booting to live CD. Uh, this is then going to be taken. We're, we're not going to be using this installer. It should automatically load to this, to the free BSD installer, which most people probably use when they put free BSD on. We're going to be going to the shell. So from here in the shell, uh, we can get started and install our operating system. Uh, so First things first, we need to see what our what our drives are. Uh, the syscontrol discs command will show us a list of our drives. In this environment, I have the CD-ROM CD0 and ADA0. ADA0 being what FreeBSD calls a hard disk, ADA, starting at zero, then going up from there. Uh, to make sure that disk is clear, we're going to use the gpart command. Okay, and this shows, this would have destroyed any partitions on uh, ADA0. Uh, what it is instead showing is that there is nothing there to destroy, so we're good to move ahead. Then we're going to initialize a GPT partition. Uh, or initially the, initialize the disk as a GPT drive. From here, we're going to make our partitions. Uh, I'm going to make three. The EFI boot partition, then I'm going to make the swap space, and then I'm going to make the ZFS file system itself. We're going to break up the ZFS file system in a very basic desktop way, a way that a server administrator or a security professional is probably going to cringe. Uh, but this is just meant for a basic desktop system. I'm not going to be going into highly detailed configuration. I recommend looking at the FreeBSD handbook if you need to accomplish those sorts of things. So, first thing, gpart ADA-A uh, 4K. This is the dash T is type EFI. Size 512 megabytes. Uh, label EFI. And then the disk we're going to put it on is ADA0. Now we have an EFI disk partition. Uh, we're going to, or as BSDs like to call it, a slice. Uh, then we're going to go new FS MS DOS uh, F32 C1 dev 880P1. Uh, and that's going to create it as an MS DOS FAT32 partition, which is the qualifying EFI type partition uh, file system needed for an EFI type partition. Then we're going to mount it. We're going to put that in the MNT folder. The reason we're doing this is unlike Linux, which will install its EFI bootloader with Grub, we're just copying it from the live environment to the hard drive. So first thing, this might seem familiar. Make sure it's capitalized. And then we're going to copy, boot. This pulls file off the uh, live CD. And then we're going to call it boot x64.efi. Okay, now we have our EFI bootloader installed. We're good to go there. Now we're going to be adding the swap space. So gpart add freebsd swap is the type size. Um, I'm going to use 32 gigabytes because I have a 32 gigabyte RAM system. 
uh, the if you recall the rule as I understand it is to either match your RAM if you have a lot of RAM or if you don't have a ton of RAM like eight gigabytes uh, double the space so I would be doing 16 gigabytes if I had eight gigs of RAM but I have 32 so we're gonna go size 32 label free BSD oops free BSD swap and then we'll put that on ADA zero now I have ADA zero slice two for P2 and then we'll call, tell it to swap on 0p2. So that's now a swap drive. Finally, we're going to be adding the ZFS file system. This is, uh, again, very basic ZFS file system. Uh, we have to add it the way we had the other one. FreeBS type, FreeBSD ZFS. Uh, label, we'll call it system, and we'll put it on the ADA0 drive. We're not going to specify a size, it'll automatically fill up the rest of the space with the, P, with the 4P3 as the ZFS. Now we just need to initialize our ZFS drivers. So we'll type ZFS import um, just to make sure that happens. Next up, and if I'm going too quickly, feel free to pause, rewind. Um, I just want to make sure we get through all this effectively. Now we're going to be creating our Z pool. Uh, this is how ZFS recognizes disks. Uh, it recognizes itself and manages its file systems. Um, I can't explain this entirely. I just know that you need to do it. So first we're gonna mount type temp file system temp file system slash MNT. Then we're gonna go and we're gonna create our Z pool. Z pool create dash O and this Z pools are really cool. Uh, the manipulation of them is beyond the scale of this video so you know I just say do some research if you want to do this even more because these things can get really crazy all right and I'm just gonna call our Z pool the uh, uh, Z root uh, some guides recommend using the word tank others like Z pool you can name it uh, basically anything you want unless you have a standard you need to adhere to so that's what's going on with that next up we need to uh, turn on some of the cooler features uh, the obvious one for right now is compression so we'll set that on now we're just gonna create a boot environment hierarchy uh, as I understand it, this is the process with which uh, ZFS creates its, uh, essentially its FS tab version. Uh, so let's go create, and I apologize if I'm wrong on that, but that's, that's what it looks like to me. Create mount point equals slash root slash root oops I typoed something there all right my apologies slash uh, we forgot some additional commands so let's just you know for the sake of illustration let's go and start that one over create oh, point equals slash dash o can mount you know, auto root slash root slash default okay there we go sorry about that then finally we will mount t zfs root root default okay and, and we're mounting that root folder uh, in the zfs pool uh, to a folder uh, to the mount folder uh, this is so resembles mounting a whole drive that it really helps illustrate what a Z pool is. Just a very cool way of handling that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know. The only other system I've seen, only other file system I've seen that does anything like it is Butterfuss. But again, I'm no expert. I'm just here to help you make uh, install the system. All right. Then finally, and we'll just make a link to our whole uh, user home folder. On, the, on that. So now we've got the file systems put together, time to do the actual installation.
All right, so this is going to just pull data from the live environment or live file system. We're not going to be pulling anything off the web for this. So to start, we're going to go to MNT where we mounted everything. We're going to just extract all of the files we need from, like I said, the live environment uh, to this folder. So tar gjf to uncompress. Pulling this from the live CD. And we'll start with the base TXZ file. So this will take a second, but here we go. Okay, next then we need to do the same thing, but with the kernel. So we go with that, we just push the up key, pull all that back, do it again. And then finally, we need to do lib32 txc. Okay, everything has been uncompressed onto our hard drive. Now we need to configure the boot environment. Okay, that is set. Now it's time to shroot. So, now we're shrouded in and we need to just build the fs tab for the swap space we're just going to do an echo command which prints two prints uh, some text into a file uh, if we pipe it to the right thing so we'll do echo uh, dev 880p2 which is the name of our swap space uh, none swap sw00 we'll do a caret and then etc fs tab so that's been made. Uh, now we need to enable the ZFS drivers in rc.conf, which is the file that the initiation of the, or the init system will pull from. So there's a command, you can edit, either edit the rc.conf file yourself manually, or you can use the sysrc command, and we'll just do that because I like that. So. That enables ZFS, uh, now that text is in there. Then we need to also make sure that the uh, uh, bootloader loads it. Uh, so echo, or may not, well, the bootloader.com file loads it. Uh, so we'll do the same thing, echo ZFS underscore load equals quote, yes, double pipe because lo that file already exists, loader.conf, and that just appends that text to the end of the file. So now we have those set up um, for when we reboot, it'll load up the ZFS drivers as needed. Now we'll just set our time zone. I'm in the United States. Oop. There we go. Eastern time zone, all good. I'm gonna clear that out because I don't need to see all that blue. Then uh, now we need to make sure that we're getting internet on our boot, um, I have config. Uh, we'll pull up ifconfig here just to see the list name of all of our network connections. We're looking for EM0 there at the top. LO0 is the loopback uh, system. We don't need that. We need EM0. So now we'll add that to our rc.conf. Uh, so sysrc ifconfig re, oh wait, EM0 equals DHCP. And that has been added now, and it'll pull set up the uh, network connection with the DHCP protocol. Now we're going to set our host name. VI, oops, wrong file. VI, so etc, host name. And we're just going to add, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever name we want for the system in our network. Um, I like freebie, strap. Then shift ZZ to save the file. We got a new file created by that process, has what we need to know in it. All right, now we just need to uh, set our root password. So password. And that should do it. 
everything is installed, the system is configured, it'll load up all the drivers that it needs to to just get to the command line and get things booted up. Internet should be configured properly. If I messed anything up, uh, we'll go on to uh, fix that in this video, but here, let's do a reboot and see what happens. Right, and there you have it. We have a booted FreeBSD desktop ready to go, ready for use. Um, hopefully that was easy to understand. It seems simple, but things are different. And it, you know, it took a lot of research to get to this point, at least for me. Um, so I hope I helped everybody out. Um, as you can see, we just to kind of get into it, uh, we can go blog it as root. We have our command line, uh, so you know this is just a standard uh, command line you'd see just about anywhere else. Um, from here, I again I would recommend the FreeBSD handbook. Um, I like to install things with package. There's also the ports system. Um, you know, package is great because it just installs uh, pretty much any other package system. Um, if you use ports, it'll compile everything for your system. Um, but once you got package installed, you can add users, you can do just about anything you want. It is not, it, it's a process to get from here to a continually loading desktop environment, but it is totally feasible. And I've used FreeBSD as a desktop for many months uh, straight at a time. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for uh, your patience and Enjoy. Happy hacking.